Hey, what's up? It's Greg. I am the Game Dev Coach. I'm going to teach you how to build games. This is video three in our series. This one is about several ways to move and rotate objects. Um, the difference between objects, game objects, and the components, and adding and modifying colliders. This is all really, really, really relevant stuff and stuff you're going to be using every single day that you use Unity. Um, first of all, I want to point out, this is part of a series. If you did not start with video one, I assume you've already watched the previous videos. So you should check out the playlist up here and just go through the whole playlist. All the videos are short and it's going to be really, really useful for understanding what to do and why to do it on your game dev journey. With no further delay, here's content. All right. So moving, rotating objects. There are four key ways that I want to show you to uh, move, rotate, and scale as well. Um, but moving and rotating is primarily the things we're going to focus on at the moment. So as you've already seen, if we click an object, either there or click here, and we've got move selected, we can move up and down with the widget, right? The inspector numbers is the next way that we can do it. We can put that, we can put a negative two, that kind of thing. That's the second way. The third way is the slider where you can click on one of these values. And I've just been working with move, but I'll work with rotation the same way. It's all the same. Um, rotate if I click off the move tool to the rotate tool here. Again, you've got the widget, and again, things are moving up here, and again, you can click and you can reset these things by going through. The fourth way is through code, and we're gonna to get to that in a few minutes. But next, we're gonna talk about what game objects are, and their transforms, and the components, and we're gonna go a little more in depth into those things. So, game objects. More or less everything in a Unity scene is going to be a game object. Everything in the assets may not be, but for the most part, these things are going to be game objects. Now, as I pointed out before, as I click through these different things, there are different aspects or components of these things. Camera has a camera component. Directional light has a light component. The cube has these different components but what you might notice is that all three of these objects have this which is the transform component any game object in unity is going to have a transform component this is good this gives us um, access to things within the code but it also is going to help teach us how we access other things like this through the code as well so these different components, you can see, if I click these little three dots, you can remove the component, you can move it up the chain, um, which for the most part, as far as I've ever been able to tell or read, um, does not do anything. I don't believe there's a certain order that these things happen in, but sometimes it's handy to have one of them near the top if I'm dealing with this a lot and I don't want to see everything else and everything's expanded. I can't get to what I want um, because some of the other things are way down here Then I could move up the component. Um, if you need to remove a component, that's how you do it. You just click button, remove component. And I'm going to undo that twice because we do actually want and need those components. So that's it for the moment for game objects, transforms, and components and we're about to put it all together let's go ahead and start by talking about this box collider I'm gonna just close mesh renderer now it may not seem like much and you may or may not have noticed this came in when we created the cube it comes with that by default this is as the name suggests a way for you to detect when things have collided with this. You can also use this switch to detect when things are moving through it. 
That, that's a really important difference. Colliding against it versus moving through it. We're not going to mess with is trigger right now. That's very useful for some situations. Not what we're talking about today. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to move over here and I'm going to hit F on my keyboard as in find. I'm going to alt click to move around a little bit and use my wheel to move out a little bit. Now, if I click off here, we see the box. If I click on here, then we see the rotate or the move or whatever we want. But one thing you might notice is this little green outline. That is the outline of the box collider. Now, if I come over here and just like above, I can click on this and I can click and drag. Now, the size of that collider is a little bit longer than the object. I can make it a little bit bigger in all cases. Now you might say, well, what difference does that make? Well, you'll see in a minute. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this at 2, 2, and 2 so that we've got a collider that's a little bit bigger than the box object. You'll see why that's important in a minute. I'm also going to come back to move, and I'm going to move it up just a little bit and then I'm gonna alt middle mouse button click to move around so I can get to it and see it a little bit better. Next we're going to add another component. I click back on the cube I'm gonna add component. I'm gonna type in rigid rigid body. Now you will notice there's a rigid body 2D that is not what we want unless we're dealing with 2D and pixel graphics and this is on and we picked 2D at the beginning. But that's not what we're doing now. So you want regular rigid body. If you pick rigid body and you're in 2D or you pick rigid body 2D and you're not in 2D, it will not work. So just be mindful. This is 3D. So we just want the regular rigid body. So basically this is going to add the ability to have gravity for some uh, collisions for some mass for some drag so before when we hit play nothing happened the cube just stayed where it was now having added the rigid body and this object now has a mass and it says use gravity now if we hit play it drops But like I talked about before, when I come out of play mode by hitting play again, your scene goes back to the way that it was before you started. So this is good. It's still, it's a good way to test. So let's add one more object in here. We're going to add a sphere this time. Game object, 3D object, sphere. I'm going to move it out a little bit. And we'll drag the green material over just for fun. Now, just like the cube automatically came with a box collider, the sphere automatically comes with a sphere collider. And like the box collider, you can change the radius and the settings. In this case, I want to leave it at the default, which is 0.5, which basically just means if I hit F to, to find and zoom in, that it surrounds the object. If I click both of them, you can see, okay, this collider is much bigger than this object, and this sphere collider is the same size as this object. So let's hit play. Again, they drop. Well, one of them drops, the other doesn't. Why? Because this one doesn't have the rigid body on there. Now it's got a rigid body. Use gravity. It's got a mass. Now I hit play, and they drop. So let's do one more thing to this scene. Let's add a floor for these objects to fall onto. So again, game object, 3D object, cube. There's my cube. I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Now I'm going to go to the scale tool. I'm going to click on this to bring that down a little bit. I'm going to make it wider and I'm going to make it deeper. Now we've got some shadows coming on from the light. Now, 
I'm going to click on that. I'm going to call that floor. You do not want to add a rigid body to this. You add a rigid body to this. Guess what? It falls just like the other objects. Not what you want. So we're going to remove that component. Let's try that. All right. Not terribly interesting, but notice this, if I hit F to, to find, shows exactly that this is as the sphere collider takes up the space of the sphere. The cube, on the other hand, it's sitting where we put the cube collider. Now, if I go to move and I pick it up, I drop it again. If I rotate it, try to rotate it. Yep, now we've dropped the ball. It's falling into nowhere. If I change this back to 1, 1, and 1, then the cube is now, the collider is the same size as the cube itself. So, knowing about the size of the collider is going to be really important because if you've got that too small because you've scaled some objects around, the things are not going to work like you think they are. So let's say that you had it inside of something else and you scale the other object and now all of a sudden it's dropping through the floor. That's not what you want. So I'm going to put that back to 111 and we're going to leave our scene as it is and we're going to start getting into code. Stay tuned.